Looks like I hit the jackpot tonight when I went outside to check my mailbox and found this. Okay, I found another article. This appear, appears to be the hair uh, magazine for the month, or the hair month in essence. This one is the business of black beauty. I want you again to sound off, tell me what you think. Have you really taken the time to understand how hair has defined our lives and how as a people it is a multi-million dollar industry, billion dollar industry with our hair and that as an ethnic group we spend more time and money on our hair than anything else and I want to put this in your head. All of this money, the majority of it, is going outside of the community. So when you decide to get your sister locks done and you give your money to another sister, that's something you need to feel proud of. So if there's nothing else that you get out of this video, let it be stop complaining about giving your money to a sister locks, loctician um, and comparatively look at how you've been giving your money and how it's been flowing out of our community without complaint. And if you are complaining about how much sister locks are, find another sister who is within your price range that you can feel good about, but let's stop saying um, it's a ridiculous style. It doesn't make sense. People spend that kind of money on their hair. You spend that kind of money over it with Mr. Charlie. You spend that kind of money at Kentucky Fried Chicken. You spend that kind of money uh, at Comcast and you never complain about it. And there's no return on your investment. You're giving this money back to the community. You're turning it over to another sister who's trying to live the American dream. So, you know, let's let's start looking at this stuff and let's really start becoming a little bit more aware of what we are saying to see if it makes sense. Not even if you not only even don't have to address this from a point of ethnicity, but you've got to ask yourself, does it really make sense what I'm saying? So this is the beauty, the business of black beauty. For too long, black women have been ignored by the beauty brands, so we built a billion dollar industry for ourselves. This is page 84. Newsflash, black women know beauty, and overwhelming 82% of us say it's important to be well-groomed, Oh, I'm not plugged up. It's important to be well-groomed. 82% of us say that. I know more of us, come on, say that. And 52% of us adhere to a set skincare regimen, yet there's a reason that black don't crack. Oh, we are the first. When are people going to acknowledge that? We were the first. It's our mitochondria that is the only other identifiable mitochondria in people of all different uh, ethnicities and, 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 and cultural groups, from Mongolian to, to any other group. We're also willing to spend money to achieve our goals, yet despite our being ideal customers, products suited for us have been noticeably absent from retail shelves, and we spend more money on hair proportionately than anybody else. But now black women have unleashed two potent weapons, our collective dollars and entrepreneurial spirits to create a market that caters to our unique cultural needs. Now, this magazine also features many women who produce products for our hair. And I'm going to get into that probably in a later video. So stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed already and you're still up here on this channel, you need to go ahead and subscribe. Show your love, show your love, give something back. So subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up. Black buying power. African Americans spend 1.2 trillion each year, and that number is projected to rise to 1.5 trillion by 2021. In 2018, the black hair care industry raked in an estimated 2.51 billion as black consumers have progressively made the switch from general products to those that specifically cater to them, to us. In 2017, African Americans captured 86% of the ethnic beauty market accounting for mm, $54 million of the $63 million spent in Nielsen reported. Ooh, Nielsen reported. Let me repeat that. In 2017, African Americans captured 86% of the ethnic beauty market, accounting for 54 million of the 63 million spent. Yeah, so 84% of 63 million is 54. In 2017, we also spent 127 million on grooming aids and 465 million on skincare. 
Why are we spending so much on skincare with all this natural beauty? What's up with that? How are we spending more on skincare? And I know we're not doing any um any um uh, SP. What do they call that stuff? They want you to put on your skin to protect you from cancer. I know that most of us aren't doing that. Where's that skincare number coming from? $465 million on skincare and we're trendsetters. Black spending on health and beauty items has led to an increase in offerings that appeal not just to black women, but also to the general population. In years past, many of us struggled to find options that worked for us. Even black models were left out in the cold with many of them having to mix their own makeup. That is a fact. Here you have some of our top models when they would go into shoots. The makeup artists didn't even have colors that would compliment them. Can you imagine you are a top model and you go into a shoot and the person who knows long ahead of time that they're going to have to do your makeup doesn't even identify you with enough, enough with you or validate who you are enough to make sure that they have colors that actually complement your skin and actually correspond with the difference in your the beautiful chocolates. Isn't that something? Like we don't think about this stuff every day, but this stuff, this stuff is serious. In years past, many of us struggled to find options that work for us. Even black models were left out in the cold with many of them having to mix their own makeup. Said that in a viral 2015 Instagram post, Sudanese supermodel Nikor Paul lamented, why do I have to bring my own makeup? Here we go to a professional show when all the white girls don't have to do anything but show up. I mean, you gotta say like, You just can't, what can you say about that? That's insane, right? Kimberly Smith, 39 of Washington, D.C., knows that feeling oh so well. A couple of years ago, she was doing her normal makeup run at Sephora when a salesperson told her that the product she was looking for was sold out and the store would no longer carry it. She looked around for an alternative and none of the brands had a foundation tone that matched my complexion, she says. I remember walking out thinking, how cool it be. How cool would it be if there was a store that women of color could go to where we could go from brand to brand to brand and if one didn't work out, there was another option. In 2017, Smith launched Marjani Beauty. Okay, ladies, Marjani Beauty. Got to check you out, baby. Marjani Beauty for women of color. Oh, it's a store. I've never heard of that. Have y'all? Let me know in the comments. Marjani Beautiful. Marjani uh, uh, Makeup, M-A-R-J-A-N-I, Marjani. Then in 2018, her friend Armaya Smith, 40 established product junkie, an online biz that helps us find natural hair products. The two decided to join forces, and in that same year, they launched the Brown Beauty Co-op, a retail space in Washington, D.C. that offers beauty and hair items for women of color. More than a product supply store, the Brown Beauty Co-op gives black women an experience. The founders say, our approach is, let's create our own thing, says Armaya Smith. This large market oversight is our gain. If they want to take this money for granted, we are happy to step in and create a solution for a huge problem that we know we've been facing. Given we spend disproportionately more money than any other ethnic group on these items, the fact that it has taken us this long is a testament to where we need to be in our mindset. The fact that it has taken us this long to capitalize on that and that we have continued to go outside of our community to search for products that were never made for us, that never had us in mind, and we still support those products without even thinking about it. There's a lot to be said about that because we know we have to mix and match. The colors are not designed for us. Um, we have had tough time of over until probably up until the last 15 or 20 years finding actual lip colors and things that worked with us. We were, we were, we, we were limited to maybe Zuri, which was the only brand that was out for a long time and a couple of three others. So this is very interesting. The black beauty entrepreneur is nothing new. In the early 1900s, Madam C.J. Walker became a self-made millionaire thanks to her hair care products. Her teacher, Annie Mae Turnbull, Pope Malone, another black beauty millionaire, is credited with being the founder of the black hair industry. According to the Black Owned Beauty Supply Association, a 28 study, 2018 study found that African-American women entrepreneurs accounted for 20% of all women-owned businesses and had the highest rate of growth in the new companies between 2017 and 2018. 
One of those entrepreneurs is a 48-year-old Jamila Ellis, who in April 2017 opened Curl Theory, an upscale salon for natural hair in Bowie, Bowie, Maryland. Hmm. When Ellis nixed her relaxer to embrace her coils in 2011, she found that she had to buy things that really weren't made for us and try to make it work. A corporate lawyer by trade, Ellis was comfortable as she put them law books down. A corporate lawyer by trade, Ellis was comfortable with research, so she applied those skills and soaked up as much knowledge as she could about working with her textured hair. Shortly after she opened her salon, Ellis expanded to selling products with her Curl Theory line debuting on Target shelves earlier this year. Here, have y'all seen Curl Theory? Baby, we need to look for this. Rihanna's Fenty Beauty also changed the game when it launched in 2017 with 40 foundation shades. Y'all know I don't get out. I don't know anything about Rihanna's foundation. Y'all know I do not get out of the house. I'm an energy recluse. Amazing, amazing, amazing. But just think about all how long this has taken. Even if we had some of this a dec decade ago, which I'm sure we had a few lines here and there, Iman and some other stuff. I mean, why is it taking us so long? Because there are many of us who have the capital to make something like this happen. Here again, we've got to ask ourselves, we've been sleeping. While 40 shades were considered generous at the time, other brands, including Dior and Revlon, have since announced their own 40 shade foundation lines, all in the wake of Fenty Beauty's commercial success. How about that? Go ahead and be the trailblazer, girlfriend. The company made more than 72 million in earned media value. Social media exposure gained from word of mouth and press buzz the first month after the launch. Other black women entrepreneurs have staked out their place as major players in the industry. Melissa Butler, founder of The Lip Bar, had her idea of an inclusive makeup line shot down on Shark Tank, but she went on to find a following and commercial success. I bet you Shark Tank wish they were in on that right now. Forbes estimated the brand's value at nearly half a million dollars. Meanwhile, a breast cancer survivor, Kashmir Nicole, founded Indie Cosmetics brand Beauty Bakery and scored a $3 million investment from Unilever and makeup artist Pat McGrath. Started Pat McGrath Labs and secured $60 million in funding from venture capital firm Eurozeo Brands in 2018. For Lake Louise 55, the biggest focus was on clean, sustainable, healthy living, so she wanted makeup that would not clog her pores. But among natural organic products, there were no brown shades, she says, to meet the need. Louise founded Plain Jane Beauty in 2011. We refer to ourselves as inclusive green beauty, she says. We're working on our 18th shade, which will be a very dark, deep color close to the skin tone of Nikor, N-Y-K-H-O-R, which is the model, remember, who was not able to get... Um, any kind of respect on a shoot where they came and had makeup to meet her unique, beautiful needs. And this is the sought after color of so many groups on the planet, whether, whether it be via tan or covering up or concealment, yet we present with this color and we can't find the shades that we need. So obviously necessity is the mother of invention, right? The days when black women don't have products to choose from to accentuate our curls are now mostly behind us as we've continued to use our business savvy to forge a billion dollar niche of our own. The change has been tremendous in a positive way, but we still have a long way to go. Please sound off on this. Tell me if you're using a, a product that is made by us. Tell me um, where you get it from, how you like it. If you use another product, let me know. Um, just would like to know what you think. I, and you know me guys, I've been wearing the same lipstick. And y'all see me change a little bit more. In the last several months since you met me, I've been wearing this for 22 years. I must say I'm not someone, I've been wearing the same perfume for 22 years. Even though Rasazi no longer makes it, it's been discontinued. I get it from all type of places on eBay, scuffling around, buying it in stock in case it ever runs out. But I must say I have not patronized some of the older brands that I would see when I would go into Walmart or into other places. I don't even, I can't even say that the two times, two or three times that I went into, what's that place, Ulta Cosmetics, when I bought all that makeup last year, that I knew what bland, brand was an African-American brand 
So I need to educate myself a little bit more, but in terms of my foundation that I use under here, the concealer that I use, I showed you guys that last year is the first one that I've ever used. I've never used a concealer and I like that up and I'll stick with that. The, the, the uh, foundation that I use under here has been prescriptives. I, prescriptives. I've been using prescriptives now for about 15 years when they closed up shop and went out of business. I thought I was going to croak. So I started ordering it online whenever I've tried anything else. Because I did used to do fashion fair for years, but fashion fair made me look like I had a face plate on. I need, I like natural makeup. It needs to be very, very light. I like my skin to look like it barely has anything on. I like um, to be able to move my face. So I have to say I'm very particular. I'm willing to try other things, but I'm very particular. And right now, prescriptive is, is meeting my needs, except for during the summertime when my skin gets a little browner. So this summer, I was mixing some crazy Maybelline crap with some of my um, prescriptives, trying to get it right. But I need to look into some of these brands. So ladies, please sound off, sound off. Want to know how you feel about this? Did you know that we spend 1.2 trillion, but that we spent 465 million on skincare? Did you know that 1.5 million dollars was spent uh, on the on the hair? Um, not point 1.5. Uh, let me see. Yeah, 2.50, 51, uh, 2 and 510,000, 2 billion. Wait a second. Let me read this right. Black hair industry raked in an estimated 2.51 billion. So we talking 2 billion, baby. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. 999 million, 999,999 plus one and then another one and then some. Okay. 510,000. We're talking about a lot here. Okay. So were you aware that this kind of money is going out of our community or was going out of our community? Humble yourself and don't complain when you give your sister something to do, your sister locks, okay? Like I said, if it seems high to you, find another loctician. But feel good about this because this is one of the ways that you can get out of the trap of having to even deal with some of that stuff in the first place. And when you do... It can be a source of pride for you and a source of support for your fellow sister who also is trying to reach towards the quote unquote American dream, whatever that is. So anyway, uh, sound off on this. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please share. Please comment. Don't forget to hit that button below and subscribe to the channel so that you can become one of our um home subscribers, part of the home team. I'm Tunisia Ali with Butterfly Transformations, connecting you to the vision of who you truly are. I help women to gain clarity, to uplevel their mindsets, to clear and heal energetic and emotional roadblocks, and to manifest abundance. I will be doing more of the articles here that are in this particular segment or month of uh, essence it looks like there's a lot of information in here about our hair the politics of it where our money is going and who amongst us is out there making sure that we have our needs met well i haven't seen her in a while looks like she's um aged quite a bit still a cutie but um i have not seen her in a minute because guys i just don't keep track of all this stuff i need to sometimes ground myself. What a beautiful woman though. What a beautiful, look at this, look at this. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Like, she's so, oh my gosh, this makes me wanna do, try to do my hair up like this. Oh my gosh, look at this. Y'all see if I can get this style, look at that. I love it. We can do this with our locks. Oh my goodness. I need to get creative. Y'all need to get creative. Y'all need to, I need some ideas because I need to get creative. Look at that. Here's another one. Our client crowns our glory for the first time in history. Miss America, Miss USA, and Miss Team USA are all sisters. Look at that. All of them are sisters. Look at them. Damn. Damn. First time in history. Look at these sisters. Dang, one of them got her cornrows. So why? what is the problem that we have with accepting ourselves? Why are we always engaged in some crazy uh, controversy? Because uh, like the latest one about the, the little sister who was in the ad, I think from H&M, all these 
black people gave her a problem. What is what is her problem? What is wrong with these people? She's a beautiful little girl. If she was Caucasian and her hair just fell up like that and it was up like that, nobody would say anything. That's who she is. That's how she looks. Embrace her beauty. Embrace yourself. God dang it. Embrace yourself. Because that's what it's about. Anytime you see somebody's hair that's of the African diaspora and you got something to say about it because you don't like the way it's not controlled or you don't like the way the edges are or something else, you got issues within yourself that you need to deal with. You need to stop projecting your drama onto somebody else and you need to get your act together and figure out how you feel and who you are. Stop projecting that nonsense onto somebody else. That poor child has probably been traumatized because some crazy black woman who can't express herself in any other way except through the, through the lenses of self-hatred has a problem with that little girl just being who she naturally is. You know, guys, we still got a lot of work to do. And this is the type of stuff, we can't blame this on nobody else. We cannot blame this on anybody else. I'm going to have to take some time and look at this magazine. This is pretty good. Uh, but I will be bringing more to you. I'm sending you out, sending you ladies love, sending y'all a lot of love. And I'm going to be doing a video soon uh, on, um, I need to do a braid out. Not a braid out. Well, I need to do a braid out, but I need to do uh, braiding and banding. I'm going to wash my hair this evening. If not this evening, tomorrow evening. It's getting kind of late, y'all. I've been up here doing videos for probably like maybe a couple of three hours. I told you all I'm getting ready to go to uh, become a professional hypno hypnotist, adding that to my Reiki practice to help my women deal with sexual trauma, addictions, anxiety, depression, and other things, which we already deal with with the Reiki, but adding the hypnosis will give me another layer of healing ability, and it will intensify my results in addition to some of the other work that I'm doing. So I feel like um, this will be a wonderful addition to my practice and so as a result I will be out of town for nine days in Florida in an intensive training I'm definitely looking forward to it but I don't want to have to make any videos while I'm down there unless you I make a video on the beach so I want to make sure I have plenty of videos in the queue for my lovely ladies who are oft loyal so that you don't miss any programming and that way if anything else comes up it'll be more spontaneous so i really feel blessed to have found this tonight the angels are working the spirits are communicating with me and giving you and me what we need sending you lots of love and connecting you to the vision of who you truly are you're with tanisha ali of butterfly transformations beautiful butterflies and perfect people join the evolution what a joy it is to be alive Don't forget you can get my book on Amazon, Manifesting Your Magnificent. Why do I keep saying magnificence? Manifesting Your Masterpiece, Self-Coaching and Daily Mindset Reflections for Up-Leveling and Living Your Best Life. It is available. Here it is. Da, da, da. On Amazon, make sure you get your copy. Don't be caught out in the cold. This book will help you transform your life and get clear on your passion and purpose. Get them dream killers out. Up-level your money mindset. Manifest abundance and help you to leverage spiritual and energetic principles to get that lover, to bring that money in, to get that job you want or anything else you want to do. So my sisters, my sisters, my sisters, spread the wealth. Have a beautiful, beautiful evening.